I have been singing my whole life. There's really nothing else I did growing up but sing. A lot of people were telling me, hey, you're never gonna make it. It's like one in a billion. It felt like my last shot. And the rest is history. your Barbie girl, I'm living in my own world, I'm plastic, call me classic, you can't touch me there, you can't touch my body, unless I say so, ain't your Barbie no, I feel like I've been singing since I was eight years old, I started singing and singing competitions and performing on stage at a really young age and loving the performing aspect of it first and then I started songwriting when I was around 13 but I feel like I've always been writing songs and singing my parents have always been really supportive of me probably the most supportive they came out to California with me when I was 14. My mom was like, let's homeschool and focus on your music for a year. We did that, didn't turn out the way we wanted to. No one wanted to work with me or sign me or just anything. So I just started writing songs at that point by myself in my room. And then we moved back east as a family, tried high school for a year, went back to homeschooling. It was like, I felt like I didn't fit in anywhere. When I started putting out music for real, like online, it was on SoundCloud, and then I started working with a producer named Circuit. That kind of took me under his wings and was like, you know, letting me write about what I want to write about and letting me be myself for the first time in the studio, so that was really fun. And we put out a song called Anyone But You on SoundCloud, and it was nuts. I started getting offers from record labels like, oh, we want to sign you, and it was just like, kind of like kismet almost. Everything I've manifested before then kind of exploded with this just this song. Who call me baby? First heard it was music. Um, I was immediately intrigued. I was like, wow, who's this? Her personality is so, you know, infectious and um, like she just has that star quality to her that, you know, I couldn't deny. So I was like, music's great, she's cool, let's do this. Biggest inspirations were all the big vocalists of the 90s and early 2000s, I gravitated towards because I liked to perform. Performing was really the only thing I knew. Madonna, Gwen Stefani, Fergie, Britney, Christina, Whitney, Mariah. Just wanna be loved, just wanna be loved.
This haircut was a happy accident. I didn't do it on purpose, actually. It happened on accident while I was baking cookies, and I forgot to cut the other side. But then I kept it because I hadn't seen it before, and I thought it was really cool. And after a few weeks, it just grew on me, and I kept it. The Max Cut, as my fans, my avatars, called it, and now it's called the Max Cut because of them. The meaning behind the Max Cut is really just doing your own thing and like not caring what anyone thinks and like committing to something that stands for something. Like for me, this means like, you know, I can have my cake and eat it too. I don't need to have just short hair or just long hair or I don't need to be in this like box and, and, and where everyone's in. Like I can be outside the box, I don't care. Like I wanna do me and that should be okay. And that's really the message of my haircut. So Tuesday the 22nd was Avatar Day. I put a poll up on my story and I asked my fans if they wanted to be called Avatars or Aviators or anything else. And they picked Avatars. I love my Avatars so, so much. And I hope they know that. I, I know that they are strong, passionate, hilarious, independent, soulful, like the, all of those in one bucket. <laughs> I like to make my songs theatrical always, so it's kind of over-exaggerated, but in a way, I'm really reclaiming the word psycho. Oh, she's sweet but a psycho, a little bit psycho. At night she's screaming, I'm on my mind, I'm on my mind. Oh, she's hot but a psycho, so left but she's right though. At night she's screaming, I'm on my mind, I'm on my mind. She is a pop sensation here tonight to make her US television debut, performing her global hit single, Sweet But Psycho. Please welcome Ava Matt. Our next guest has the number one song in 22 countries and has been streamed on Spotify more than 450 million times. Here to perform Sweet But Psycho, please welcome Ava Max. Sweet But Psycho is a song. It's a huge hit. We're going to hear it here in a second. You're at the beginning of a, what's going to hopefully be a long, long career for you. Oh, she's sweet but a psycho, a little bit psycho. At night she's screaming, I'm on my mind, I'm on my mind. The perfect amount of present and nostalgic, and it, it just, I don't know, it hits right. The Thank song you. seems to just be re resonating and hitting so hard. The chorus, like, mocks almost the girl. It's like, and it's, this girl feels out of her mind, and she feels psycho, but she's not. And it's kind of like she's being gaslighted in this situation. I think it's okay to show all of your sides. It's kind of crazy because the night Sweet Potato came out, like on iTunes, Spotify, everywhere, I kind of like made a wish. It sounds kind of crazy, but I was like, this is probably my last shot. At least it felt like it. I was probably not going to give up still, but in my head it felt like my last shot. So I'm like, you know what? If this doesn't happen, if no one relates to this song, then I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm writing about because at the end of the day, no one's relating to it if no one relates to Sweet But Psycho. Let's be real, because we're all a little Sweet But Psycho. And I, I, I like was on the floor, curled up in a ball, making a wish. Then I started like bawling like a baby. I'm like, I hope people like this because it's really pop and I love pop and I hope people love pop still. Sweet so Psycho hitting a billion streams is pretty wild. Yes. I just saw this girl that I love. She sings, I'm the sweet but a psycho, a oh, little uh, bit psycho. Max. I just sent her a comment. I said, wow, this is a great song. Like, keep it going. style is funky, strange, and not consistent. I do not like being consistent. <laughs> Here with her song, So Am I, Ava Max. This song is really about, uh, it's like about one specific thing, just loving yourself and and like being embracing all your differences and embracing being different. And I, I always say this because I hate 
people who like compare everybody on social media. And that's why I started the social media challenge. So my challenge where everyone's writing so my on their hands and telling everyone why they're different because everybody's everybody's different. And I think um, when we compare, it kind of hurts the soul and I don't think it's healthy. And that's that's the main meaning behind the song and the message I'm trying trying to spread. You, you take all of the light, light, light away But, but then you give me fireworks I, I think of leaving now, now, night and day But, but then you always find the words You're contagious, baby Love when you love me, hate me The way you rock, rock, rock my body lately You set the rain on fire I wish the lows were high I wish I could stop to stop, stop to save me It feels insane having fan base everywhere, to know that my music reaches places that I've never even been to. So it's super rewarding and I feel super grateful for that. The craziest thing about being successful is the attention, especially in music and, and red carpets and all that. It's just so many cameras and it's like, I definitely in my head did not sign up for that. And I was, you know, making music for so long and performing. But I definitely feel like I'm getting used to the attention because it's not something I seek. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to my avatars. This would not have been possible without my avatars. Thank you so much. Thank you to my management, Busa, my label, Atlantic Records and APG for always believing in me from the very first moment we met. It has been such a long journey, 10 plus years, so, wow, thank you so much, thank you. I think it's incredibly important to have equality for all, and also, the song is fun as well, but at the end of the day, I really wanted to give off a message of, it's not just kings who can be in charge, it can be queens, and we can have equality for all, and that's that's the world I think we're going towards. And I don't think it's 100% there yet, but definitely almost there, and I think we have a lot of work to do, but this song maybe motivates even the guys to kind of like, hey, make some room for the women. <laughs> if all of the kings had their queens on the throne, we would pop champagne and raise our toes to all of the queens who are fine. Kings and Queens is about equality. Yeah, um, equality for all, and uh, it's 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 for female empowerment. It's for queens supporting queens. You know, growing up, I saw a lot of men in positions of power, and not enough queens. So I want to spread that message as 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 best I can, and through my music, that that's the only way I can do it. So yeah.
Then baby, it's off with your head Gonna change it and make it a world you won't forget No damsel in distress, no need to save me Once I stop breathing fire, you can't take me And you might think I'm weak without a sword But I'm stronger than I ever was before My music, personally, can't just be about love It needs to be about taking care of one another and love for each other and a support for one another. Empowering record. Beautiful. Kings and Queens, <laughs> that's fantastic. Ava Max is really good at just making good old-fashioned bops. Now I hear sounds in the hallway Who's Laughing Now is about seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and knowing you are stronger and better than your obstacles. It's about all the emotions we go through in life. It's the ups and downs, the yin, the yang. I feel like my whole life is driven by duality. Like, do I date this guy or do I not? Like, you know, there's always an angel and a devil on my shoulder talking to me. <laughs> I feel like in general, our lives and relationships and our careers are all up and down and we can relate to that. That's one thing we can relate to. It's never consistently happy or consistently sad. All the tracks on the album are super anthemic. Um, there's no sad song on the on the album because I really think we, we just need anthemic music right now. taken this long to, to get to album release stage? Was the pandemic a big part of that? Pandemic was a big part of it. Being on tour last year and not being able to do certain music videos and photo shoots and visuals I had in mind, and, you know, because the album was done late last year pretty much. So um, we were going to release it earlier this year, um, but <laughs> um, the pandemic happened and I think none of us could ever see something like that ever coming here and it did. And, 
and we're dealing with it. But I think also music is medicine. So I couldn't hold it. I couldn't hold it any longer. I wanted people to have it. And um, I feel like it's a new normal now we're living in. So it just makes sense now instead of earlier this year. absolutely incredible and I have nothing bad to say about that album whatsoever. This is a really, really strong piece of work. For a debut album, it's really strong. It is. Good for her. I've said it before, I'll say it again. She's got a lot of potential and I'm very excited to see where she goes next. I will say I loved the concept for this album. Honestly, all the tracks are really solid. I don't think there's a bad song in this album. This was just perfect for the album. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome job. Sing, sing. 10 out of 10, two thumbs up, four thumbs up. That was amazing. This album, she most definitely held up to the expectation. She most definitely- I didn't think the album was gonna do as good as it did because again, we were in quarantine and I couldn't really promote it or go out there. Mm. But the fans were there. The fans stood up and they're like, hey, we're listening to this even in quarantine. And I was like, okay. And the streams proved- Billions. Yeah, I don't even I don't even know. I'm in shock and to this day I still can't believe that happened. <laughs> My Head and My Heart, and it's also on the album, Heaven and Hell. Growing up, I was very insecure. And of course, like every teenager, um, you need to figure out who you are. And in a way, you tell yourself you're all confident, but inside you're battling demons that you don't know until later. So I think it's all about letting yourself feel it. Now I've come to the point where I just don't care what anyone thinks. And I feel like everyone should be like that, you know? Do your own things. Don't go with the trends. Like there are so many trends. Doing something completely different can really be rewarding for yourself and, and helping others as well. I think that for the youth, especially this next generation, just don't care what anyone thinks, do you. Like, that's the best way to do it. If I read these comments online and really got hurt every day by it and wanted to change myself, that would be horrifying. Oh, you want me to change and not do pop music and silly music that's fun? I'm not going to do that. 